Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters and friends Welcome to a, another live stream This one is going to be a very very interesting one Today I'm being joined by brother Hamza Assalamu alaikum bro Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh How are you? Alhamdulillah Well, I cannot complain Ever grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yourself Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah bro, very very good And very excited as well bro This is going to be a very important live stream And the reason is bro, because you know, throughout history, Christian missionaries have made it a objective and goal of their lives to misrepresent Islam through through poor translations of the Quran, you know, misrepresenting certain concepts and ideas about the deen. And now we find individuals even today in the 21st century, respected individuals, professors who are, again, misrepresenting some core fundamentals of Islam just to paint that negative perception. Now, in particular, what we're going to be discussing today is a clip by Dr. William Lane Craig, which has been circulating again. I, uh, you were my, you were the one that actually told me it's quite an old clip uh, that was there a few years ago, but it's been recirculating again, where he speaks about Allah and he speaks about the love of Allah mentioned in the Quran and compares it to the love of God in Christianity. Now, we're going to go through the whole clip and we're going to break it down in a second and we're going to get your thoughts on it and highlight why Craig's view is incorrect it's either that he hasn't read the Quran or understood it properly, or it's he's it's it's that he's deliberately misrepresenting. Whichever the, out of the two it is, we're not going to make that we're not going to make that judgment, but we're going to put the facts on the table for people to see for themselves, inshallah. But before we do that, Hamza, why don't you give us a summary, bro, of what we're going to be discussing? Yeah, before I do that, I would like to basically say that you know we have to have some form of intellectual humility and gratitude as well at the same time, because Dr. Willie Lane Craig has been responsible for reviving powerful Islamic philosophical arguments for the existence of God. And I personally have benefited a lot from his work. And he is referenced in my book, The Divine Reality. And for that, we should show some form of intellectual humility and also gratitude. Notwithstanding, it's very important to highlight very carefully that I remember Dr. William Lane Craig mentioning the concept of God in Islam and Christianity, I think 12 years ago. And it, and it, and it struck me and I've always wanted to respond in some way. Mm -hmm. And Alhamdulillah, you gave me this opportunity and may Allah bless you and we can do this together. And the first thing I like to say is, Dr. William Lane Craig has obviously not studied the Islamic intellectual and spiritual tradition properly. He hasn't gone into the tafasir, the exegetical works of the verses that he is referring to. He, in my view, hasn't studied the normative classical creeds and the commentaries associated with them concerning the conception of the divine reality in Islam. And this is problematic because he's been willing to be very nuanced and philosophical when it comes to philosophical ideas, existential ideas, theophilosophical ideas. But when it comes to the divine in the Islamic tradition, he basically regurgitates a form of narrative that echoes someone who's been on Google and does some basic searches. And this has to change. And hopefully by the end of this video, it would evoke something within him to engage positively with the Islamic intellectual and spiritual tradition and hopefully engage with us in order for us to have a discussion on this topic. So the thing I really want to say is this, there is, an argument against Dr. Craig's argument. And it's based on three premises, two premises and a conclusion. Number one, for God to be maximally loving, he has to be maximally forgiving. Number two, the biblical God is not maximally forgiving. Three, therefore, the biblical God is not maximally loving. And we're going to unpack this. I think the first premise doesn't have to be discussed because if someone is maximally loving, they have to be maximally so forgiving. Repeat those three again, just so everyone's on the yeah. same page. So premise number one, for God to be maximally loving, 
it entails or he has to be maximally forgiving. And this is not a controversial premise because forgiveness is the language of love. Mm -hmm. Number two, and this is the controversial premise. The biblical God, according to William Lane Craig, is not maximally forgiving. Number three, therefore, the biblical God is not maximally loving. Now, why? Why is the biblical God not maximally loving? So uh, not maximally forgiving and therefore he's not maximally loving. It's very simple. Number one, God's love, according to a biblical narrative, is rooted in suffering. God's love in a biblical narrative is rooted in forgiving humanity outside of the relation mm -hmm. of the human being and the divine. And it's based on an event that supposedly had to happen. And not only that, it's based on you accepting the event actually happened. It's not rooted in your relation to the divine, your heart being sincere and asking forgiveness to the divine. Mm -hmm. Constra con contrast contrastingly, the Islamic conception is based on maximal forgiveness mm -hmm. because it just takes a human heart to repent to the divine. And this is why in the Christian tradition, because of John 3.16, because of the sacrifice and the atonement, what the biblical narrative is saying, it's saying that human sin limits God's mercy. Mm -hmm. So from this point of view, William Lane Craig, I think he's basically being a little bit of a sophist here, because if you really understand the Christian doctrine, then you have to admit that God is not maximally forgiving. If he's not, if he's not maximally forgiving, then how can he be maximally loving? Because to be maximally loving entails maximal forgiveness as well. Mm -hmm. So that's the summary of what we're going to be talking about. We're also going to be talking about the fact that actually, have you not read that Allah says about himself that he is al-wudud? He is the loving. That's one of his names, which comes from the Arabic Arabic word wood, which means the loving that he's giving. He is excessively loving. His love is so pure and so maximal that it's even greater than any form of love you can imagine uh, in, in a worldly sense. Even a mother's love, because a mother, she needs to love. God doesn't need anything, yet he loves. Mm -hmm. Imagine how pure and maximal his love is. So... Have you not read that God is loving? Have you not read that Allah is Ar-Rahman, and which means the merciful? Now, interestingly, from a linguistic point of view, Rahma indicates a very intense, loving mercy, a boiling over type of mercy, an immediate mercy, a mercy that's so powerful that no one can stop. And Allah says that his mercy encompasses everything. Mm -hmm. The sinner, the evildoer, the believer, the non-believer, Allah's Intense mercy and mercy in the English language is a synonym for love encompasses everything. So why are you misrepresenting the Islamic tradition? Because there are different levels of love in the Islamic tradition, different levels of mercy. You have Rahma, you have Rahim, you have Muwadda, you have all of these different levels and they have specific understandings. Anyone who studied the Islamic tradition would have known this, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't say God's, God is not, his, his mercy is not universal. His mercy is, um, what, would he, what did he say, impartial and his mm -hmm. mercy is uh, 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 conditional. That's not true because Allah says his intense mercy is impartial because it's for everybody. It's universal, encompasses everything. Mm -hmm. And it's also unconditional. Allah yes. is merciful to you even if you disobey him. Mm -hmm. And as I said, mercy is a synonym, synonym for love in the Islamic yeah. tradition. So this yeah. is the kind of summary of the things that we want to talk about. Yeah. But and one he, thing he, he actually yeah. overlooks this. You know, he's just referring to, well, let's just speaking about, okay, he loves so-and-so, he doesn't love so-and-so in the Quran. And he completely neglects the aspect of mercy and how mercy entails love. It's a part of love, like you said. And, and what we're going to see as we discuss this, bro, is that beautiful balance between the love and mercy of Allah, which works in such a, a magnificent and perfect way from the perspective of what this life is all about we're going to see this too and it's it's and if anything we're going to see how the conception of love and mercy of allah in islam in and it being in line with the objective allah created reality for is perfect it, it's yes. completely coherent subhanallah one thing i want to mention yeah. though isn't it very interesting that you know is it 
Is it maximal love to create human beings with inherent sin? Mm -hmm. Whereas human beings in Islamic tradition, they're created with inherent goodness based on the fitrah. I mean, um, case closed. That's like a philosophical mic drop right there. Yeah. Your conception of the divine has already put a distance between humanity and the divine because of mm -hmm. sin. Because the wages of sin is death, right? Yes. God is so holy according to the, the Christian tradition. That's why you need an external type of sacrifice. This is not the Islamic tradition. You don't mm -hmm. need that. Mm -hmm. you are, you're, you're born into goodness, not into inherent evil, inherent sin. Mm -hmm. So uh, from this point of view, just on that perspective, what is more loving? Like God is making it harder for everybody else according to the biblical narrative that not only are you going to be created, but you're going to be created distant from me. Inherently, mm -hmm. you're going to have sin, which distance which distance the human being from the divine. But Allah, he creates the human being in goodness, mm -hmm. which we call Allah. the fitra, the innate disposition that is based on proto knowledge, that has proto knowledge within it, which is God is reality, is worthy of worship, and we have a basic level of goodness. Mm -hmm. let's, proceed, let's proceed. So, so bro, before I proceed, let me clarify something to the audience. Some people have had an objection with me titling the video Hamza Zortzes versus William Lane Craig. Now, I didn't say it was a debate. Obviously, I wanted to make the title a bit spicy. Uh, just so we can get the interest. And inshallah, this will lead to a proper discussion, a face-to-face -face discussion between maybe Hamza and William, Dr. William Lane Craig after this goes live, inshallah. Um, so yeah, just to clarify that. I never said it was a debate. I did clarify on the community section of the page that this is a discussion. It's a response. It's a reaction video. So apologies to anyone that uh, took the wrong end of the stick with, with in regards to the title. But now, inshallah, let's continue. Let's play the clip, bro. You tell me when to stop, and then we'll analyze each section as we go through. Thoroughly. Sure, sure, sure. I think the question is better reworded by saying, is the concept of God in Islam the same as the concept of God in Christianity? Do we have the same understanding of God? And there I argued that they are worlds apart, that the concept of God in Islam and Christianity is very, very different. And one of the principal ways in which they are different is that the Muslim concept of God, I believe, is morally defective. It is a morally defective vision of who God is. As the greatest conceivable being, a morally perfect being, God must be all loving. And this is exactly what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that God loves sinners. His love is impartial. It is universal. It is unconditional. And this is a world of difference from the God of the Quran. According to the Quran, God does not love sinners. He does not love unbelievers. He is an enemy to unbelievers. God in the Quran only loves those who first love him. Okay, stop here. Okay. Yeah. So as we said, you know, he, he, he basically misrepresents Allah in the Islamic tradition, God in the Islamic tradition, where he's basically saying that God doesn't love sinners. He doesn't love those who, you know, disobey him, the wrongdoers. Now we have to understand what does he mean by love here? Because as we said, mercy is also a synonym for love. So does God have mercy for the disbelievers? Absolutely. We mentioned this in the beginning. Allah says his mercy encompasses everything. Does God have mercy for wrongdoers? Absolutely. Now, but I also want to challenge his conception of love. What type of love are you now talking about? Because there are different types of love. The Islamic mm -hmm. tradition is very nuanced, right? We have many uh, names, meanings, words for love. And they have a particular reality. Now, you know, it's easy to use the English language to say love, or what do you actually mean? So I would I would actually ask him that question because I want you to think about this, bro. And and mm -hmm. I wrote this down on my phone. Let me just unlock the phone. Now, is it maximal love to love everything the same? That's the big question. Yes, and this yes. is the problem because it is not maximally mm -hmm. loving to love everything the same. Can I love goodness the same way as I love badness, evil? Mm -hmm. In actual fact, would it be loving for me to love evil? <laughs> I mean, let's think about uh -huh. that, right? So think about this. 
P- perfect love is to love goodness, to love mercy, to love kindness, to love connecting with one's creator, to love peace. So, and it, it follows that if you love something, you have to hate its opposite. Mm-hmm. Which means you have to hate evil. You have to hate the opposition to love. You have, have to hate malevolence. You have to hate polytheism. You have to hate chaos and destruction. Mm-hmm. Are you saying it's perfect maximal love to love that which is a barrier to love? Mm-hmm. I mean, this doesn't make sense. Because yeah. if, if you love everything, then you really don't love anything at all. Mm-hmm. Farmer, <laughs> that's, that's the point. Safe. Yeah, you, you've actually summarized it better than the way I was summarizing it. Sorry, bro, sorry. So that's no, the first point. Yes. The second point is on terms like God doesn't love the sinner. Well, what mm-hmm. does that really mean? Does it mean God doesn't love the, intri- the human being, what makes the human being, the intrinsic value of the human being? Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. What does Allah say about the human being? He has a ruh, he has a soul, he has a fitrah. And in that fitrah, there is goodness. That innate disposition has goodness. Does God hate that? No. Let me tell you what God doesn't like. God doesn't like the way the human being has identified themselves by virtue of their state of being. I know Mm -hmm. this is a bit philosophical, but you have to understand this. So God doesn't like how we've identified ourselves by virtue of our state of being, meaning how we relate to ourselves, Mm -hmm. how we relate to others, and how we relate to the creator. So if my relation to myself and my relation to others and my relation to the creator is not good, is evil, why would God like that? Mm -hmm. That's not an expression of maximal perfection. And even though God would not love that, he still has another type of love, if you like, which is he still has mercy for the one who relates to himself, relates to others, and relates to the divine in an evil way. Mm -hmm. So this is a nuanced discussion. And what it mean, Craig, unfortunately, did not give Islam due justice, especially yes. since, you know, he's grateful for the likes of Al Ghazali, the 11th century theologian. And what baffles me, Habibi, yeah, Ruhi, Imran, what baffles me? Al Ghazali himself, he wrote his Ihya, his compendium, uh, sorry, his uh, revival of the religious sciences in the 36th volume. What does he write about? He writes about muhabba, love, intimacy, contentment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that book he talks about, he affirms Allah is al-budud, he is loving and he loves. And there can be a loving relationship between creation and the creator. That's his own teacher. William Lane mm-hmm. Craig's teacher, Al-Ghazali, wrote about this. You didn't have to go too far to understand that Allah is al-wudud, the loving. And he says that his mercy encompasses everything. So from that point of view, I would even say that the way he's understanding God's love is not maximally perfect. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely, bro. And just uh, let me just, I guess, paint that picture again in, in a slightly different way so we can really get the point across to people. It's like, it's what we're saying is from the Islamic perspective, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is maximally perfect love is in line with his names and attributes number one and number two it's in line with the objective that he's created this world for allah tells us for example in surah surah mulk that he created life and death to test which of us is best in deeds therefore god has created us in this world he's made us agents with free will and he wants us to do good and stay away from evil now if god has created us for that reason then why would this very same god who is claiming is maximally perfect and maximally loving at the same time express his love to creation in a way which undermines that whole project because if he loves if he loves the sinner or the hitler as much as he loves the mother teresa or the saint well then where is the objective where is the where is the motivation for the 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 saint to continue to be good and to continue on that path and where where is the motivation bro for the 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 the, the, the sinner and the hitler to leave the sin and to become good Right, and I, and, I, and I really believe, bro, when Allah says He does not love the disbeliever, for example, in the third chapter of the Quran, uh, verse 32, where He says He does not like love the disbeliever, this in a way is acts as a motivation for the disbeliever to leave that state, like you mentioned, and adopt the state of absolutely belief, right. And notice that it yeah. also means that it doesn't mean though that does, Allah doesn't have another intense mercy for the disbeliever, yeah. of course, Allah has intense mercy for the disbeliever. Yeah. Yeah. Because remember, we said there's many grades of mercy and love in the Islamic yeah. tradition. It's very nuanced. But bro, you've you've opened a massive can of worms, philosophical worms, which is amazing. Not for us, for the Dr. Craig conception of mm. theology. Moral duties don't make sense anymore. Yes. 
Because what is that? That pressing ought that we ought to do something. If Allah loves the sinner, everybody in that way, then you know, in the Christian tradition, I'm fine. I go kill a thousand people, right? Yeah. And I just believe that Jesus sacrifices his life for me, no problem. Then I'm okay. As you said yesterday, it's a form of you tell Relig me, yeah, religious nihilism. That was, that Reli was, yeah, it was perfect. Up. Religious yeah. nihilism, nihilism, yeah, which yeah. is absolutely really, 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 really powerful. Yeah. So yeah, but bro, also, also, bro, you know when I, I and this is another way I want people to think of it. When Allah says He does not love the disbeliever, this is Allah's love being expressed to the disbeliever in a way because it's His loving mercy which makes the the disbeliever think, "Oh my God, my God does not love me." It hits him deep inside his fitra, and this will encourage him to rectify his. That's a very good point, right? bro. It, it, you could articulate this way as well. So. Say a, 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 say a disbeliever, someone who doesn't, who rejects the truth, is listening to this. So Allah mm. has intense mercy for you, but you won't have a the the relationship of special love with Him unless you accept the truth and you accept the fact that He's the only deity worthy of worship, mm. and that that's, Muhammad that's Salam is the final prophet. Salam. That should be motivating because it's not it's not from the, that point of view that you are discarded intrinsically as a human being, mm -hmm. but the way you've identified yourself and how you relate to yourself and others and Allah is something that is not loved at all. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be in a state of being that is loved and you enter to that loving relation with Allah, then you have to do X, Y, and Z. Yes. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, I think we should just going back on the point that if you love everything the same, you don't love anything at all. Yeah, you've undermined the whole human project from that perspective, and yeah. and that in itself would be a, a a sign that well, you in a way you'd be claiming that the maximally perfect being is not maximally perfect. Yeah, if that was the way he expressed his love to creation. Yeah, because and, um, yeah, a maximally perfect being doesn't love everything the same. Yeah, and and and, and yes, does a maximally perfect being have mercy for everything? Absolutely, yeah. just like Allah says, He has mercy yeah. for everything: the sinner, the evildoer, the believer. But does Allah have that special love for everything the same? Of course not. Because if that's the case, you don't really love anything at all. Because yeah. as we mentioned, maximal perfect love means that you love goodness. And therefore, you should hate the opposite of that, which is yes, evil. Yep. So from that point of view, I think his assumption is false. Maybe we absolutely, should continue bro. the video. Yeah, let's continue, bro, inshallah. Let me play. Give me a second. But his love rises no higher than the sort of love that Jesus said tax collectors and sinners exhibit. They love those who love them. And that's the kind of love that the God of the Quran exhibits. So the Quran assures us of God. No, it's just, so, stop right there. Stop right the there. God fearing and the good. This we have to hold. We we have to just say no here. This this is this is almost uh, cheeky. How can you say the God of Islam, His love is like the love of the tax collector or the sinner? What we've said already undermines that because God's mercy and mercy is a synonym synonym of love. His intense mercy is for everything: the sinner, mm -hmm. the evildoer, and the good one. But I want to mention something here. In actual fact, he is a victim of his own criticism. Why? Because remember, maximal love entails maximal forgiveness. God in the biblical tradition is not maximally forgiving. His forgiveness, in other words, the way he expresses his love, is worse than any type of human forgiveness. Bro, if, if I did you wrong and you said to me, I would only forgive you if someone's son is sacrificed. And you have to believe that event happened, yeah? And by you accepting that event, I will forgive you. Is that forgiveness? Well, that's, <laughs> not, that, that's not adequate for limited human beings. How can you apply that to the creator of the heavens and the Thank earth? Thank you very Honestly. much. This is what you call a mic drop philosophically. It's not <laughs> mic, it's a pen. But you get my point. Yeah, it's so correct. I think what Craig has done here is philosophically, theologically, spiritually unacceptable. Yeah. It's 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 bordering literally a joke, and it's unfortunate that you would. And this is what, one of the things that really shocked me, bro, was someone of his caliber would 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 make such statements publicly, uh, not doing his research. You know that, and you see this over and over again, and that's what's shocking, Spanna. But anyway, let's finish off what you're saying. Let me play the rest of the clip for you. God's love for the God fearing and the good doers, but He has no love for sinners and unbelievers. The 
Quran says that God does not love the very people that John 3.16 says God loves so much that he sent his only son to die for them. While we were yet enemies, Christ died for us. So this so be, is... So be here, bro. Yep. Okay, so John 3.16, that God loved us so much that he basically sacrificed his only son for us, right? Now, there's another dimension to this, which doesn't directly relate to what we're talking about, but it's still very significant and important because it, it, it you know, John 3.16 is supposed to be this amazing thing and that, you know, the Christians have a monopoly on a loving relationship with the divine. I am sorry. This is not the case at all. John 3.16 actually shows that there is no maximal forgiveness and maximal love in the biblical tradition with regards to the conception of the divine. Why am I saying this? Because if, if God sacrificed his son for human sin, then isn't me not believing in Christianity a sin? Me being a Muslim, isn't that a sin? Mm. So by virtue of that, I should be okay, right? Yep. Je didn't Jesus sacrifice? Wasn't he sacrificed for me as well? Yep. Me being a Muslim, is that sinful according to the Christian tradition? Mainstream biblical Christianity would say, Imran, Hamza, you know, you guys are sinners because one, you have inherent sin and you don't follow Jesus, you follow Islam, which to many Christians would say is not the truth. And that's fine. But then I would say, well, didn't Jesus die and get sacrificed for me, for this mm -hmm. sin? If they say yes, then do I have to accept Jesus? They would say, no, 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 no. Because it's a gift, you have to accept the gift. You have to accept that it actually happened. Mm -hmm. But for me, doesn't that really devalue the intrinsic nature of the sacrifice? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, going it, back to Craig's original point, God's yes. love must be just across the board, equal and the same at all times. Yeah. Right? That, that should apply to you as well. Then well, the it, should, the sacrifice. It, should, it should apply to the manifestation of his love, which is yes. the sacrifice. Yep. If the manifestation of his love, which is the sacrifice, doesn't have intrinsic value, because it's also contingent on me accepting, accepting it, it yep. which is a historical event, which is based on a text that is historically inaccurate, has textual uh, integrity problems, X, Y, and Z, then how is that maximal love? And, and, and how does that make the event so special? When now, not only must the event happen, but I have to acknowledge the event and accept the event at the same time. So I would say that in some way, obviously it needs more theological and philosophical unpacking, but in some way it really diminishes mm -hmm. what you're saying about John 3, uh, 16. And in actual fact, let's go back to the whole forgiveness. Maximal love entails maximal forgiveness. Well, how is this maximally forgiving? He is... Well, firstly, he's not even maximally just, right? Mm -hmm. Because he is blaming someone else. He is blaming someone that doesn't deserve the blame. Mm -hmm. And he's torturing and he's sacrificing someone that didn't that doesn't deserve this the, the, the torturing and the sacrifice. So how is that maximal forgiveness and maximal justice? The other thing is it's not maximal forgiveness because the forgiveness of me as a human being is contingent on an event outside of my relation to the divine mm -hmm. and it's contingent on me accepting it. But with regards to the Islamic tradition, maximal forgiveness is manifested itself. Why? Because it just requires me and my heart to do tawbah, istighfar, mm -hmm. to turn back to God, to ask for his forgiveness. I don't need a sacrifice outside of me. right? Salah. Salah. And because the wages of sin is death, sin is so bad that, you know, you have to have some kind of blood sacrifice. Yeah. Which really the biblical tradition is saying that God, that human sin limits God's mercy. Allah. Allah. And, and that's, and that's not the Islamic tradition. Yeah. So which is more a loving and forgiving God? God, which one? And, and, bro, this is why, and this is why Muslims should talk about this more. And we don't, unfortunately, because we have a very deep, loving type of tradition and it's manifested in our history. I want to read something to you, bro, just very quickly. Yeah. Uh, and it's actually a historical narrative. It's based on a Jew Jewish poet, right? A Jewish poet, you know, our Jewish cousins. Yeah, let me tell one of our Jewish cousins what he said. He, Brothers he, and sisters, while Hamza is bringing it up, if, it, you have it, any it, yeah, sure. if you have any questions, please hold off. I'll tell you guys, we're going to do questions at the end, inshallah. Uh, so just repost them if you've posted them already and we'll address them, inshallah. Make sure to share this 
on your social medias, on your lives, wherever you wherever you can share this, inshallah, so other people can get access to this too, inshallah. Come on, bro, yeah. sorry. So in the Christian tradition, the Holy Spirit is supposed to be working, right? In mm-hmm. you know, in the in, in the present tense and throughout history. But every time the Christians have always been in power, especially the medieval Catholic Church. It's 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 not been very loving at all. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we don't have to talk about when Christianity was in power. What happened? Yeah, look what happened in uh, in Spain. Mm. We know what happened in Spain. What was it called? It was called the. I uh, forgot the name for it. The the Inquisition, right? Killing the Jews and the Muslims, right? And the Jews had to go to Istanbul and Turkey. And the Jewish rabbi, he says, come to the land of the Turks. Rich are the fruits of the earth. We live in freedom and peace, right? Kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so every time, you know, the Christian tradition or the church or the Holy Spirit has been manifesting itself politically, right? Throughout the ages, it's just been bloodshed and killing of minorities and stuff. What's going mm-hmm. on here? And it's interesting that a famous Jewish shade, sage and poet, Abraham Ibn Ezra, he wrote the following when he was living, I believe, under the Islamic influence, Islamic authority. He said, the Muslims sing of love and passion, the Christians of war and revenge, the Greeks of wisdom and devices, the Indians of parables and riddles, and the Israelites, songs and praises to the Lord of the hosts. So, you know, poetry is like oh, a no. mirror of what's happening from a historical perspective. And the other thing I want to say is we had our kind of saintly figures, our pious predecessors, our pious masters, especially in the early three generations. The love of God, loving God was an act of worship, right? Because worshiping Allah means what? To know him, to love him, to obey him, and to direct and single out all acts of worship to God alone. And there was a famous... Uh, scholar, if you like, uh, it, it was a woman, a sheikha. Her name is Rabia al Adawiya. She wrote a beautiful poem and she wrote it about the love of, 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 of Allah. It's very moving. She said, Two ways I love thee selfishly, and next, as worthy is of thee. Tis selfish love that I do not, save think on thee with every thought. Tis purest love when thou dost raise to veil to my adoring gaze, not mine the praise in that or this. Thine is the praise in both. I wish. Yeah, it's a really powerful Spanla. Spanla. Yeah? Beautiful, and, and 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 it's 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 throughout our tradition. We've had scholarly people, pious people, especially in the early three generations, talking about the love of the divine, talking about all of these amazing things. So, it's uh, very important to understand that. The idea of God's love and us loving God has manifested itself throughout history, Amen. throughout our poetry, throughout our literature. I mentioned Al Ghazali when he talks about divine love. What about the student of Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, Ibn Qayyum, when he basically wrote, you know, he's called the heart surgeon. And I'm not talking about medical, or we're talking about spiritual heart. He talks mm-hmm. about the love of Allah, right? And being close to Allah and loving Him. Mm-hmm. You know, it's an aspect of the key aspect of worship to have ikhlas, which means sincerity to do the act of worship for Allah alone. And one aspect of ikhlas is do, to do it because He's worthy of it and to do it because you love Him, right? Yes. So um, love, it permeates our tradition, you know, it permeates level. our tradition. Well, so and, it's, yeah, it's just unfortunate and, that, you know, people as popular, you know, they, they should have an epistemic duty, yes, an intellectual duty to at least allow the tradition to speak for itself from that point yeah and bro honestly like when you think about the just the mercy of allah even to the sinner the one that's done all this evil and wrong bro allah's loving mercy encompasses them allah reminds them allah calls them back allah encourages them by telling them that he does not love them you know allah encourages them by telling them who he does love allah gives them time on this earth bro he doesn't just kill them or take their life immediately as soon as they commit a sin or do something evil. and interestingly that is a manifestation of intense mercy yep and as i said mercy is a synonym for love in the english language so allah has intense mercy for you Mm. that he would say to you your state of being how you relate to yourself others and how you relate to god is something that he does not love so what would make you think i need to state change my state of being yes and as simple as that. And bro, and, and all of this, look how beautifully it's in line with the objective of this existence as well. That Allah is not creating a situation now by some sort of sacrifice, which which brings into question his justice, you know, brings into question his uh, his forgiveness. It all just pans out in such a beautiful and coherent way, subhanAllah. You know, Absolutely. when you start thinking about it. Absolutely.
let's let's finish let's finish off uh if he's not finished already he's pretty, he's pretty much <laughs> finished but let's finish off what he was let's what you're saying inshallah Heavenly Father revealed by Jesus loves sinners, loves unbelievers, wants them to come to him. His love is universal, impartial, uh, and unconditional. But the God of the Quran, his love is partial, it is selective, and um, it has to be earned. It is conditional. Only those who earn it will receive it. So this is a vastly different conception of God. So I would agree with those who say that the God of Muhammad is not the God of Jesus Christ. He's not the God of the Bible. Okay. So in fact I would say Yep. Yeah, well he would we've already dealt with those points. Uh just to go back on the point when he says the God of Islam, his love is partial, selective and earned. Again, that's not true. God's intense mercy, and remember mercy is a synonym of love in the English language. God's mercy is impartial, is for everybody, sinner and, and, and believer, disbeliever, good doer, etc. It's not selective. Sorry Hamza, sorry, Hamza, can you just repeat what Craig said? Because I don't think the guys could hear the last bit. Yeah, so saying. basically what he said, he said, God in Islam, his love is partial, selective and has to be earned. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, well, we already dealt with that because mercy... Allah being our Rahman, the intensely merciful, mercy is a synonym for love. And Allah says that his mercy encompasses everything. So it's not partial. It's not selective. It's for everyone and everything. Good person, bad person, believer, disbeliever. And it's not earned because you could reject him. You could live a life of disobeying him. And Allah is still enveloping you in his intense powerful, immediate mercy, because that's what yeah. Ar-Rahman means. And interestingly, the word Ar-Rahman shares the same root as the root for the womb, yeah. right? And, you know, the womb holds the baby and the mother, what kind of love does she have for the baby? And this echoes a prophetic tradition where the Prophet Muhammad, upon whom be peace, okay. said that, you know, Allah has more affection for you than your mothers. SubhanAllah. Case closed. I don't know what Craig is reading. Is Craig reading the same tradition? Is he reading the same Quran? Is he reading the same intellectual spiritual tradition? Has he studied the Islamic theology properly? So what I want to say to him is this. Why don't you accept this warm in invitation? It's going to be warm. It's going to be a, a dialogue. It's not going to be hopefully arrogant and excessive. It's going to be just two people speaking or as many people as you want. Come online for a live discussion with Sapiens Institute. Let's have a discussion on the concept of God in Islam and the concept of God in the Islamic, in the Christian tradition. It's time that we had a conversation about this. It's time that we don't talk past each other. It is time that we articulate our case for the concept of, the, of, of God in our traditions in a warm, intellectual, and in, 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 a, in a compassionate way uh, with wisdom. And, you know, without talking over each other, we're having a nice, friendly discussion, just like what you had with, you know, a popular YouTube atheist cosmic skeptic. I'm mm -hmm. sure you could do that with someone who, you know, is of the Abrahamic faiths. Let's yeah. have that discussion. It's time that we had discussion on this particular point and to do it in a way that is edifying because maybe we've said something a little bit wrong today. Maybe we've misrepresented the Christian tradition. Maybe whatever the case may be, we can actually learn from each other from that point of view, which is very powerful and very interesting. Uh, notwithstanding, there is another approach to dealing with this issue, which Brother Adnan Rashid, if you go to Brother Adnan Rashid's YouTube channel, mm -hmm. he's actually dealt with this in a different way. It was more of a, you know, well, let's see if God is loving because look at the biblical tradition, what it says about killing the unbelievers and all of these things, right? And he uses a, he uses a, he uses a textual approach. Mm -hmm. uh, so if someone's interested in that approach, please go to Adnan Rishi's YouTube channel for you to uh, 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 learn from that approach as well. Uh, that's probably not the, the particular approach that I'm used to because that's not my learning. Adnan is an expert on these things, mashallah. Uh, my thing is more creed. Theology, theo, philosophy. That's why we've addressed it in this way. But I think both approaches are quite uh, uh, complementary. And what's very interesting, I said to Adnan, I said to him, uh, you, uh, you went for the jugular and you spoke about the elephant in the room at the same time. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
but yeah, so so I think this is it. I think we've uh, we've 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 addressed uh, uh, Professor William Craig. Uh, you know, we thanked him in the beginning for, for 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 some aspects of his work, but you know, we had to address it the way that we did. And hopefully, you know, this warm inter invitation is open. And if you if he wants to, his team wants to contact us, we, we we will reach out. But if his team wants to contact us, just go to info at sapiensinstitute.org. S A P I E N C E Institute dot org, and yeah. Absolutely. And you know, bro, uh, recently William, Dr. William and Craig has been quite, he's been a bit more vocal in regards to Islam and been talking about Islam a lot more. I don't know if it's influenced by David Wood or whatever the case is, um, but definitely, look, if you're going to yeah, speak about David, Islam, David, I thought David Wood was finished. Well, he's, he's finished, but he's still trying to... As, as per... As hatcha, per hatcha as, as per the, <laughs> the language of, uh, of uh, Muhammad Hijab. Hijab, yeah, mashallah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an open invitation. You know, the objective, one of the objectives behind doing this live was one, number one, first and foremost, to clarify, you know, how we understand and try to, to the best of our ability, do justice to how we understand the love of Allah from the Islamic tradition. And secondly, was to invite Dr. William Lane Craig for an official debate. It could be online. We know he's done it before with the Cosmic Skeptic, etc. online. So there shouldn't be any excuses or issues. Um, so definitely, you know, and another thing, brothers and sisters, there's, Hamza, there's about 300 and there was about 350 people watching this live. There's about 306 now. Wow. So brothers and sisters, well, like it's, it's, I would say it's a responsibility upon every single one of us right now to share this or tweet this to Dr. William Lane Craig or his team and, mm. and get this out there so we can have that dialogue. Let's make Absolutely. him aware of this content. And, and at, the, at the very least, bro, at least he gets to learn about what Islam says in regards to the love of God. Yes. And one thing, one thing I want to mention is to the Muslims, right? You know, we have to take responsibility as well. We haven't, you know, collectively, especially in the West, revived this understanding of worship that includes God's love. It's very important for us to resurrect this classical mainstream Islamic understanding of the divine nature that he's al-wudud, he is the loving, and how we relate to that. Because in worshipping Allah entails knowing him, but also loving him and obeying him. And that includes being humble before him and directing all acts of worship to him alone. We need to establish a loving relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason I'm saying that, because it would change the way we become in the world and who we are. So I've, I've been so shocked, especially when I became Muslim around 18 years ago, that Christians can say that they have a loving relationship with the Lord. Muslims don't have a loving relationship with the Lord. And I'm mm. thinking, how on earth can they even say this? And that's because maybe we don't speak about this enough. Yes. Because if, if any Christian, and I'm talking to my Christian brothers and sisters in humanity now, if you understood who Allah is, that he doesn't require anything external to the way you relate to God in order to God, for God to forgive you, right? You don't, it doesn't require an external sacrifice. It doesn't require you to believe that that sacrifice actually even happened. Just your heart to turn to him. That's all that's required. This is maximal forgiveness. This is maximal love. The way you worship Allah is not through his son or through a pope or a book. It's actually yourself. Salah, the five daily prayers, comes from the root word to connect. We want to connect directly to the divine. This is a direct loving relationship. A direct loving relationship. Jesus is not the bridge between you and the Father, the yeah, so-called Father. But rather, it's just your heart and Allah. Your heart and Allah. Let your heart gaze to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Become closer to Allah by following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Allah says in the Quran, if you love Allah, then follow me. Meaning follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah would love you and forgive your sins. And this is a special type of love. Allah has that intense mercy for you. But if you want that special type of love, you want that love, then you need to follow the way to him, which is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because, <laughs> because, you know, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the kind of Muhammadan way, in the way of the sunnah of the Prophet yes, is the way to connect to him. And that doesn't require anything external. doesn't require his son. It's just you directly to Allah. So what is, who has more of a loving relationship, right, from mm -hmm. that point of view? Because it's, 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 it's all there. It's just you, your heart, and Allah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I want Christians to study this tradition, um, to understand this tradition, to understand who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. 
And uh, maybe you should play a final video because it's very interesting that William Lane Craig was saying that God in the Quran hates so-and-so. But what does actually the Bible say? I mean, you've become a victim of your own criticism. Watch this video, guys. Let's play just, this video. And put the volume up. Yeah, give me a second. Let me just... Well, basically, yeah, carry on until you get it ready. It's in Proverbs that the that, that the God of the Bible actually hates seven people or seven things at least. Let me put the nail in this coffin real tight. God hates a liar. God hates a liar. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16 says, These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. In the short list of seven things that God hates, two amongst them are lying. I think that's that that pretty much summarizes it, bro. I think that's another interesting point, Spanla. You know, and good we left it at the end because it wasn't necessary, bro. If you think about it, you know, making this point wasn't. Yeah, necessary. it, it, it wasn't. But you know, you have yeah. to understand that sometimes you need to be coherent and consistent. You can't be a yeah. victim of your own criticism. So mm. apply absolutely. the same criticism to the biblical God, my friend. Right? Yeah, God absolutely. hates. God hates someone who's who's who's. God hates the liar. Right? God hates the liar, bro. The the, the person who 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 what does false witness or something. So, uh, you f square the circle, Doctor William Lane Craig, please. Craig needs to be careful. You're not going to say it, but I'm going to say it. You know, you have to be very careful that you're not lying, especially about the Islamic tradition. And we're not saying he is, but he has to at least do his research when he's speaking about Islam and the love of God in Islam. Uh, that being said, brothers and sisters, two things, two calls to action. Number one, share this with William Lane Craig, get this out to him so we can make that actual debate happen between Hamza and Craig, Dr. Craig. And secondly, bro, uh, you'll be shocked. Last thing, you know, when I was going through doing a bit of research yesterday on Google, so many Christian missionaries are taking William Lane Craig's argument, this argument about the love of Allah being not perfect, etc. in Islam or deficient and writing blog posts and, and all of these essays and all of these things online. So many of them, same narrative. Bro, brothers and sisters, make sure you push this video. This is the starting point of getting the correct narrative out there. Inshallah, push this video. Yeah, yeah. Push brother Adnan Rashid's video that he's done on his channel, which was also Absolutely. good. It takes a different perspective. And yeah, that's it. Anything comes up? Last things you want to say, bro, before we wrap up? Well, I, I, I wouldn't want to have a debate with Craig. I want to have a conversation with him. I think that's very important. And uh, hopefully in the future, we're going to be writing about this topic in specific response to Dr. Craig's perspective on the concept of God in the Christian tradition, the Islamic tradition. And, you know, anything we've said that is wrong, anything that we said that is inaccurate uh, has come from our egos, has come from shaitan. Anything that is good has come from al-wudud, the loving Lord, al-Rahman, the intensely merciful Lord, al-Rahim, the specially merciful Lord. And everyone needs to remember that. May Allah bless every single one of you. May Allah guide every single one of you. May, may all of you be showered and enveloped in God's intense mercy and his boundless love. This is the Islamic tradition. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi